uh, 96 and the crown, ch the crown chakra 1,000. So if we add up all of those centers, it's 144, and multiply them by the top one there, it's 144,000. And ancients believe that if we can get the energies going up the body, then we create a halo. Those are the chakra centers. And if we can get the energy going up the body and up the spine, we get energy coming out of the, 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 uh, the crown chakra at the top. And this is why in ancient pictures, they're often represented with halos, different sorts of halos. And only Jesus has the halo with the cross of the sun behind his head, because only Jesus is the sun. You'll find the saints have different types of halos because they're not as pure as Jesus was. And what we find is that uh, when men ejaculate sperm, they lose a great deal of protein because sperm is at 99% protein and zinc. And uh, one of the problems with reincarnation is if you have children and you don't go to heaven, then you come back as your children's children because the DNA is the same and the voltage is the same. So if you don't have children, A, there's no body to come back to, so that makes it difficult to reincarnate, which is good because you go to heaven. <laughs> and uh, the, the thing is, this is why priests have to be celibate. This is why Moses said in the Bible, uh, so, uh, take the foreskins off, off the babies. Circumcise, thank you, circumcisation, which stops them masturbating, stops them getting rid of the sperm, because as soon as you get rid of sperm, all the energy in the bottom body goes to the gonads to make more sperm, instead of going up the spine to make voltage to go back to God. In the same way, women who love their baby send all their energy to their child. And instead of the energies going up the spine and, and amplifying, they go down and uh, it stops them getting to heaven. Earlier we saw the importance of the number nine. Tutankhamun's tomb has nine, 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 nine seals and he was born in nine coffins. And uh, here's a picture of Tutankhamun going to heaven in, the, in his burial chamber at uh, the Valley of the Kings. Here we see Tut meeting Newt, the goddess of the night sky. So he's going to heaven. And then we see Tut as two twins, embracing as Iris, the twins, the morning star and the evening star. When Tutankhamun died, he went to heaven. He was resurrected in heaven as the twins, which means Tutankhamun must be the same, another reincarnation of Jesus. And uh, if you go down to Peru, what you'll find is that the ancient Incas had many stories. For example, one of them says by Cieza de Leon, a Spanish writer in the 16th century. He said, before the Incas had ruled or even been heard of in these kingdoms, the Indians relate a thing more noteworthy than anything else. They say there suddenly appeared from the south a white man of large stature and authoritative demeanor. This man had such great power, he changed the hills into valleys and from the valleys made hills, causing the streams to flow from living stone. They called him the maker of all things created, prince of all things, father of the sun. He did more wonderful things, giving being to men and animals. By his hands, very great benefits accrue to them. This is the story the Indians themselves told me, who in turn told it to their children and handed down through ancient times. They say he traveled along the highland route to the north, working marvels as he went. And they say they never saw him again. They say that in many places he gave men instruction on how they should live, speaking to them with great love and kindness, telling them to be good and do no damage or injury one to the other. But to love one another and show charity to all. They called him Tiki Viracocha and they built temples to him. The huge statues in the village of Tiwanaku in Bolivia are held to be from those times. After a long time, they saw another man who looked like the first, but they don't mention his name. They have it from whoever they talk to that he could heal the sick with his bare hands and restore sight to the blind by words alone. Thus he was loved by everyone. Working miracles and by his words, he came to Canas near the village of Kasha. The people rose up against him and threatened to stone him but he sank to his knees and raised his hands to heaven. They then saw fire in the sky, which seemed all around them. Full of fear, they avoided him, and they asked for his forgiveness. 
They regarded this as a sin for doing what they did to him. And they say further, leaving the place where this occurred, they came to the coast, and there, holding his mantle, he went forth, forth amidst the waves of the sea and was seen no more. And as he went, they gave him the name Viracocha, which means foam of the sea. Now, there are lots of stories like this about the two white men who walked through Peru performing miracles in olden times, around 500 AD. Viracocha means foam of the sea. When I lived in Cornwall many years ago, I put my Wellington boots on and walked in the water because I couldn't understand why they would call him foam of the sea. And I walked in the foam of the sea and I thought, well, what's happening to me right now? And I stood between the foam of the sea and the shore. And then I went from the shore and I went into the water away from the foam of the sea. And when I was in the foam of the sea, I thought, well, right now, I'm in touch with the earth beneath my feet, the air, the sun above my head, and with the water. I'm in the foam of the sea. I'm in perfect balance with everything, the earth, the fire, the air, the water. If I move to the land, I am no longer in perfect balance with all four, because I've lost contact with the sea. If I step into contact with the sea, I lose contact with the land. So I'm not perfect. The only time I'm perfect is in when I'm in the foam of the sea. So what were they trying to tell us? The Indians believe that the cow is sacred because it gives holy milk. And the foam of the sea is clearly a metaphor for the perfect human being, he who is in balance with nature. And the Indians, in worshipping the cow and Lord Krishna, which means Christ, the, the Christos, because Lord Krishna was born and he, uh, he was said to be like all of the other super gods. I, I'm trying to connect. I've got to cut out large chunks of this lecture because, as I say, it takes 16 hours and a good day. But... Uh, The Indians believed heaven to be a milky ocean, the foam of the sea. And that's where God lived. And they believed that when we died, we went to the foam of the sea. Now, in uh, 1988 in Peru, there were lots of reports about some tombs that had been discovered. And one of the tombs contained a figure of the man in the tomb in the guise of a crab. Now, the crab is an animal that lives on the land and in the water. The crab lives in the foam of the sea. And so, in 19, uh, what would it be, 95, the first book I had published was The Mayan Prophecies. And I did all the sunspot stuff, how they understood how the sun was affecting life on Earth. Although I couldn't understand how they could have done it, that was it. I thought, well, they must have been very clever. But then I started to think, well, no, nobody could do this sort of thing unless they were superhuman. So I thought, there has to be a connection here. Maybe everybody, as we mentioned earlier, wasn't clever in those days. As we were talking about, uh, had I made a mistake in saying that everybody in Israel were clever in the year zero? Well, it wasn't. It was one man. And in the same way, Everybody wasn't clever. In Mexico, it was one man, Lord Pecal, who was clever. And, of course, Pascal is a Catholic word for Easter, which tells us that Lord Pecal was associated with Easter, as was Jesus, who died on the cross at Easter. So I started to have a look at Viracocha. And uh, he was the Peruvian... I call them super gods, These, this holy energy that comes to earth periodically. And uh, there were two super gods discovered in Mexico, one at the top of the pyramid and one at the bottom of the pyramid. There was Viracocha and Viracocha Pachacamac. Viracocha Pachacamac was a god of the world. So one arrived in about 350 AD, the one at the top, 
That was Virakacha Pachaka.